Hey, you cats and kittens, we are back with I Love You, Colonel Sanders. We're at lunch. Don't worry about it. Our best friend, Miriam. Oh, have I been calling her Miriam this whole time? I have. Miriam is going to eat lunch with us. And we've kind of already scored points with Colonel Sanders. Sweet. Let's get back into this. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everybody, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. You sure can. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shush! Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said shush. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Is that why it smells so good? Uh -huh. Oh, she said that's such a weirdly cute face. <laughs> that must be what I smelled. Indeed, that smell, you hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. He's not mysterious. It's Colonel Sanders, and he's smokingly hot. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true, is this. All that, oh my god, I kind of, can I, are, does KFC deliver, Postmates, DoorDash, Grubhub, one of those things? <laughs> this is going to make me hungry. <laughs> Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chickens breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. Roma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. Will you share the secret with me, Colonel? What do you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary, like, oh. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I know at that moment that the only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent. As she slides closer to the Colonel Sanders, she realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Uh, 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 Ashley, back off. Colonel Sanders is mine. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any... I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I can try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one piece of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing!
Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Look, we're in space. I love space. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try to identify every flavor, savor the moment, and everything that it tells you. We're not swimming towards the light. The flavors in your mouth are so beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with the Colonel Sanders. I keep calling it, I keep saying the. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha. How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune. Publish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. He even has a freaking chicken staff. Ow! It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We got two more whole days to get to know each other. What's the rush? The semester ends in two days. That's the rush, Colonel. Mr. Sanders. He's clearly not going to give it up that easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. Sometimes it does. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone. And then he leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... Oh my god, they're not going to tell me? Oh no! Crap! <laughs> no, I'll never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you get some if you... S oh. While you're wrapped up in a huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about my I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds it sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show him your personality to him. I want to wow him with a big, big idea, but I feel like that's a bad choice. You know, you know about, you know about that. I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? See, this is where I thought it was going to go. No. No! We're not adding spicy things to chicken. Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? <gasps> heard of them? I tend to an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Habanero, poblano, cayenne, but that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improvise on my re recipes. Zombie Kitty, I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. That certainly didn't go as planned. Actually, it kind of did, because I kind of thought it was going to happen that way. 
You better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step inside a massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could ever need. Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally we get to show off our stuff! Wait a second! Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. <gasps> She's a tiny food chef? Adorable! Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Natch! Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two. That is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Sure, zombie kitty. I'll prepare a station. Man, way to sound so desperate, zombie kitty. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hopefully she finds like a day- Oh, it's one of those guys. I know it's one of those guys. Hello, new partner! Beep boop! Hmm. Oh my! Two potential partners! I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for- being al for not being alone forever. All right, should we pick Clank or Pop? I mean, Clank doesn't have arms. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Pop. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. Er oh my God, I made him cry. Why did I do this? Why did I make him cry? Look at his sad face! Oh no! Oh no, I'm so sorry, Clank! Pop gives a big smile as he steps into the same station as Miram. I'm a chef! We hope you are. He holds up a banana and without peeling it probably eats the entire thing. Uh oh. It's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act gross out. I love your enthusiasm, Pop. She looks at you like, really, this kid? But it's too late to change your choice now. We should have gone with a robot. But he doesn't have hands. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick up a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You'll get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. My grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy because he got his recipe from his grandmother. This will make us bond that our grandmothers taught us to cook. Ha ha! Hee hee! Hearts! Hee hee hee! I've always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, and comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turned away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> what do you want, Ashley? Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. You better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Rock music. I love this. Ugh, no. Jeez, Van Van. 
While I'm over here crushing Zombie Kitty's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was a deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. I can't even hear myself think over this. Oh, howdy there, Ashley Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Hmm. Actually, no. It looked like Zombie Kitty was struggling, so we offered to give her... So we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young and amateur chefs need a lot... These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Oh my god. See, if we t I, I have a theory that if we just keep picking like all his responses, it's not going to turn out, right? So let's just do that. We're going to turn to Colonel Sanders. Honk of honks in our time of need. I'm here to learn and express myself via cuisine. Not to bicker with the prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took Zombie Kitty as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has zombies' natural talents or their loyalty. Really? Loyalty? I've been ditching my best friend for you. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he is nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and you realize in the tension of the moments your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He is holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Man, I'm so hungry! Let me know in the comments down below if this is making you hungry. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look so spectacular. Granny would have been proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it. But he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment of all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock, and the moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's planning against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Uh-oh. Ben, Ben, do something, do something! Scooping up a finger full, Ben, Ben tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravies and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he sinks away. 
Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Aw, Bam Bam, you're starting to realize you need to come over to the bright side, aka the zombie kitty side. And this like rock mania behind this whole thing is crazy. Hold on, right there, zombie kitty. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect it better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Bam Bam rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Oh. Wow, look at that. It's on an axe with a star in it. Kind of looks disgusting. Oh, it's octopus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. It's just. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I have prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopusness, my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Like, oh my god, can we get a plate? You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Bam Bam and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off his plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish just doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. Oh my god. Whoa! 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 It killed him! You killed him, Van Van! You killed him! Everyone, step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Not Pop! No, no, no! Pop winces in pains for just a moment. Then it's almost immediately back to his oblivious self. What? Oops! Oopsie! Tastes like poison! Pop's alive? The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd as they are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious dangers, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Uh, hello, hello. I just turned into a goat. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Yeah, we don't care. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be a perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, zombie kitty? There's something I need to tell you. <sighs> Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stop, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant the... 
we should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. That's so, like, mind-blowing. Not mind-blowing. That's so... Ooh. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! No! No one can prove that! I had no kill anybody. Hmm. I also saw that you killed that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero. <laughs> oh, wow. What is this? We're gonna... We're gonna stop here. <laughs> the spork, <laughs> this is a spork monster. We're gonna stop here. <laughs> I'm loving this so far. This is so much fun. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am Zombie Kitty. Thank you and have a good night.